Hi, my name is Emma McDonald, and today I'll be presenting our work, Caption It in an Accessible Way That Is Also Enjoyable, Characterizing User-Driven Captioning Practices on TikTok. I did this work with co-authors Tessa Eagle, Hitchin La Panuntakul, Su Hyun Moon, Catherine Ringland, John Freilich, and Leah Findlater. We'll begin with the motivation for our work. User-generated video content is increasingly a mainstay of people's media diets, but the accessibility of this content is little understood. One of the key accessibility considerations for video is whether or not it's well captioned, the focus of our research. User-generated captions are not legally required or standardized and are often highly stylized. Despite the fact that prior work has found that highly stylized captions often are less good at providing access. So we wanted to understand the current state of user-generated captioning on one of the biggest platforms for user-generated video content, TikTok. Launched in 2016, TikTok is a leader in user-generated video. Yet they did not implement a closed captioning feature until 2021. This did not mean that all TikToks were uncaptioned prior to 2021, however. To understand why, I'll explain some captioning lingo. First, there are two main kinds of captions. Open captions are captions that are burned into a video that can't be turned on and off. And next, there's closed captions, which are not a part of the video. They're displayed in an overlay that can be turned on and off. Most television captioning is a closed captions model, but prior to 2021, TikTok was captioned using open captions, and they have remained a mainstay of the platform. TikTok's closed caption feature is much less consistent. So for our study, we investigated how TikToks are open captioned, guided by two research questions. First, how is user-generated captioning implemented on TikTok? And next, how do choices made in generating and placing captions impact TikTok users who need captions to meet a deafness or disability related access need? To answer these questions, we ran a two-phase study, a content analysis followed by an interview study. For our content analysis, we identified two types of content we were interested in understanding the captions of. First, general audience videos which we define as content TikTok would be likely to show a user it knows nothing about. If you were to encounter a random TikTok video, what might its captions look like? But we also wanted to learn from the group that we hypothesized might be at the cutting edge of user-generated captions, people making deafness and disability related videos. We defined this as content that creators self-identify as related to deafness and disability via the use of one of five hashtags, hashtag deaf, hard of hearing, disability, accessibility, or neurodiversity. Having defined the videos we were looking for, we began by manually collecting both kinds of videos. We collected 1,654 unique general audience videos and 1,029 unique disability and deafness related videos. We then randomly selected and coded 150 of each types of videos and analyze them using an open coding framework, resulting in a final analyzed set of 300 videos. Having completed this process, we also wanted to understand how the methods that we were observing in our content analysis impact people who need captions to access TikTok and conducted an interview study. We had nine participants who used captions to access TikTok due to deafness, disability, neurodiversity, or a related condition. And they joined us for a 60 minute study session where we discussed their current use of TikTok and opinions on captioning, their reactions to specific TikTok captions selected to highlight our content analysis findings and their desires for the future of user generated captions. Let's get into what we found. Today, I'll highlight findings in two key areas. First, elements of captioning and next, desires for the future. Before we jump into the findings, I wanna highlight that while I will be showing some stills that look like TikToks, we use simulated data for this presentation to protect the anonymity and ownership of the videos that we analyzed in our data set. The first batch of findings we'll look at is elements of captioning. In doing our content analysis, we identified three key aspects of open captions that were relevant to understand. First, how are audio and language represented in text? 
Next, how are captions styled and placed? And finally, the content of captions themselves. We'll begin with how audio and language are represented in text. Human utterances, particularly speech, were captioned in most videos. 297 videos contained human utterances and 290 of them captioned those utterances, 97.6%. And this aligned with our participants' priorities. As P1 explained, when it comes to speech, no captions and I just scroll past. All other sounds, however, were largely uncaptioned. Seven out of 204 videos that contained sounds other than human utterances, things like animal sounds or music, captioned those sounds, only 3.4%. However, our participants emphasized that this wasn't that harmful. P6 explained, captioning music just gives me more things that I need to read, and then it gets frustrating. And P9 explains, if you miss a sound on a TikTok video, you can still enjoy it but for movies, you're left wondering. Specific affordances of this format, such as the small screen it's often viewed on or creative practices, made captioning sounds other than speech less relevant for our participants. Next, we'll consider aspects of caption style and placement. We observed varied approaches to caption styling and placement. 16.7% of videos used non-standard timings, such as the example I show on the right where the word breathe begins outside the frame of the video and is shrunk into the center. 34.3% of videos moved captions around the screen, sometimes to segment and structure information, but sometimes seemingly randomly. We observed a range of approaches to using color in captions. 29.3% of videos introduced a color other than black and white, and 22.3% used multiple colors in their captions. When non-standard choices were motivated by readability, they could be helpful, but often they created less readable captions. As P5 explained, I just don't want them changing the style and the font and the letters. That is really hard. Now we'll consider caption content. How does the content of captions represent the audio that was voiced? Captions were largely accurate transcriptions of video audio. 19.7% of videos had at least one error, but the average word error rate of videos with errors was 9.1%, ranging from 1 to 35.1%. Traditionally, high error rates have been the biggest barrier to captioning users accessing user-generated captions. And it does seem that TikTok has finally seen a breakthrough in the accuracy level of user-generated captions. We did, however, observe specific instances where captions were deliberately incorrect. Specific forms of deliberate non-verbatim captioning can be necessary on algorithmically censored platforms. As one participant, P9, explained, while I don't like it when they censor content, I understand the creator's reasoning. Because algorithms might remove videos that had objectionable content, it was more understood that creators might censor content not only as a patronizing move as it is traditionally considered to the deaf community. We'll now discuss participants' desires for the future of user-generated captioning. Though TikTok is captioned at a level that allows caption users to enjoy the platform, we found that there is still significant room for improvement. As P3 put it, I think people are so much better at captioning their videos, but they're still learning to caption it in an accessible way that is also enjoyable. The lack of a standard for user-generated captions is felt by caption users. P2 explained, when it comes to the captioning industry, there are rules, there are standards, and they know what they are. But TikTok, it's wide open, anything goes. It's an open source. Participants hoped that platforms should embed captioning guidance into their interfaces to improve the quality of videos. As P7 imagined, whenever they are posting something, they can have a prompt. Do you want to caption the video or benefits of captioning? We'll now wrap up with some key takeaways from this work. First, thinking about how we can move toward a user-generated captioning standard. Our participants expressed that the lack of a standard made captions less usable, but we also found many ways that user-generated captioning does meaningfully differ from professional captioning. 
Therefore, we suggest that a user-generated captioning standard should build from traditional standards with key points of departure. Namely, it loosens standards for formal mechanics of grammar, language, and punctuation as they don't match the tone of the platform. Next, while a standard should prioritize readability when selecting caption colors, creators could use a wider range of colors than white on a translucent black background. Next, music and background sounds should be captioned sparingly, prioritizing sounds that contribute to video understanding. And finally, non-verbatim or censored captions should be considered in the context of platform censorship and shadow banning practices. It's not realistic to insist that captions be verbatim on a platform that would censor videos based on the content of their captions. Finally, I wanna reflect on collective access in action. Disability justice activists highlight that access needs can be articulated and met privately through a collective or in community, what they term collective access. And we see on platforms like TikTok that non-disabled people can and will take part in making content more accessible. Future work should investigate what drives creators to caption videos and how that could be translated into digi other digital accessibility efforts. Imagining a future of digital accessibility that engages all internet users. I want to once again thank my collaborators as well as our funding sources that made this work possible. And thank you for your time and attention.